الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل صلاة جمعة من شعائر الإسلام وفرضها على أمة محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام لتكون مكثرة للذنوب مطهرة للآثام نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الذي يؤرم المؤمنين والمؤمنات برؤية جمال في الصلاة والسلام ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله المبعوث إلى دعوة إلى دار السلام صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأزواجه وأصحابه وأطباعه وخلفائه الراشدين المرشدين المهديين من بعده وأزرائه الكاملين في عهده خصوصا منهم على الأئمة خلفاء رسول الله على التقيق حضرة أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى بقية الصحابة والطابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليه مجمعين يا أيها المؤمنون الخاضرون اتقوا الله وأطيعوا إن الله مع الذين تقوا والذين هم محسنون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أستعوذ بالله قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحبكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تركت فيكم أمرين لن تضلوا ما تمسكم بهما كتاب الله وسنة النبي Dear Muslim brothers, today's khutbah is about the importance of following the path of Ahl Sunnah. Allah Jalal has granted us Islam, which is the savior both in this world and in hereafter. The Quran Azim Shan teach us the way in which we can reach forever paradise. Rasulullah is a person who teaches us the Qur'an and what the Qur'an wants us to do in the best manner. He does this either by doing it himself, fili, or by saying that what we should and what should not do, qawli. All this is called sunnah. After him, the Sahaba who would say, let my mother and father be sacrificed for your for you, Ya Rasulullah, as a sign of love towards Rasulullah, and after them, the Tabi'een and the Tabi'u Tabi'i, have all followed the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sahaba understood in the best way the teachings of the Sunnah, and showed great efforts in forwarding the Sunnah to the Ummah who came after them, paying great attention in not making any mistakes. When they asked Hazrat Aisha about the akhlaq, the ethics of Rasulullah, she said, Don't you read the Quran? Rasulullah akhlaq is the Quran. Of course, the best person who understands and lives by the rules of Quran is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, in order to live our religion in the best way, and to live this world with iman haqiqi, we must tie ourselves strongly around Sunnah and follow the path of Ahl Sunnah. There are a lot of ayahs and hadith about the importance of Sunnah. In Surah Nisa, Allah Ta'ala says, Whoever submits to Rasulullah, of course, they will submit to Allah. In another ayat, Allah Ta'ala says, O Messenger, tell them, if you love Allah, then love me so that Allah will love you and for forgive your sins. In one hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I leave you only two things, the Quran and my sunnah, his path. For us, for as long as you follow those two things, you will be on the right path. 
In one hadith, hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I leave you on, this hadith was forwarded by Imam Malik, and the uh, tafsir of this hadith says, the sunnah of Rasulullah is like the boat of Hazrat Nuh. Whoever boards the boat will escape, whoever does not will drown. Therefore, as it can be seen, we as Muslims must show great effort to follow the path of Ahlul Sunnah and do as the Rasulullah ordered us to do. Shariat consists of four sources Quran, Hadith, Ijma'i Ummah, and Qiyas al Fuqaha. The two main sources, of course, are the Quran and Hadith. Therefore, in order to understand our religion and the laws, which it sets out. We must understand what the Quran and the Hadith says and must, and must follow the path. May Allah's blessing be upon us. Talking about the importance of the Sunnah and the importance of following religion, we should not ignore that our nation, nation of Muslims, will be corrected only by educating Generate new generation of Muslims. The fightings between adults should not take our time from educating and bringing up a new generation of Muslims truly educated and truly following their religion and understanding their religion. So importance of youth is highly appreciated in our religion but unfortunately ignored by our ummah nowadays. Muslim brothers, Prophet Muhammad wasallam says in the hadith, treasure five things before five. Let's count them. Your youth before old age, your health before illness, your wealth before poverty, your free time before becoming occupied and your life before, before death. This hadith mentioned in Tirmidhi. Youth, health, wealth, and time are temporary stages which is within the cycle of life. They seem so permanent, so full of promise, yet in reality they are so brief and deceiving. They give a false sense of authority and independence that leads to rebellion and neglect. The Holy Quran states, Most certainly, man transgressors all bounds because he deems himself to be independent. Verily to your Rabb is the final return. Al-Alaq, ayah from 6 to 8. You see, those things we sometimes you forget about the importance of those things. When we do eventually return to Allah, everyone will inevitably have to give an account of the favors that they have enjoyed. Man will remain firmly rooted to his place on the day of judgment until he is asked about five things, his life and how he spent it, his youth, how he spent it, his wealth, where he earned, important, this is very, very important, not only how he spent, also the way we work, uh, earn this wealth. It should be, of course, in a halal way. And, and how we spend it. And how he acted, I mean a Muslim, on what he learned. It was mentioned in Mishqab. At young ages, we postpone things, hoping to reform sometime in the future. Last realizing that we may never see the dawn of another day. And we are going to be questioned particularly about how we spend our youth. We are therefore never too young to be a devoted and committed Muslim. During the golden era of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, society was divided into t only two categories. An individual was either regarded as a child and granted all the privileges of childhood 
or as an adult who sh shouldered responsibilities of adulthood. Therefore, there was no intermediate phase of ad adolescence. Teenagers were regarded as adults, integrated into the adult world, and contributed to the dynamic growth of Islam. They served as a beacons of knowledge, justice, and courage. They bravely opposed the interview of anti-Islamic forces. Age is, of course, is a biological process, but it's also an important factor shaping moral values and social structure of the society by marriage, education, and work. Our religion gives youngsters added responsibilities to help protect moral and religious values. Allah has promised seven people his shape on the Day of Judgment. As a mark of distinction and honor, youth who spend their years of years a devoted and conscious Muslims in the face of overwhelming temp temptation and seduction are one of the seven people. The fact that Allah grants such a distinguished position to them shows how difficult those challenges may be. So may Allah help us fulfill our responsibilities and make our children on the right path. We are all now in one of the, those institutions that make their all possible efforts to bring up new generation of our Ummah. May Allah grant those who serve in this school or other masajid to teach youngsters. We cannot correct ourselves or our Ummah by fighting, having a lot of like discussion among adults. The correction can be only by educating the new generation. I, I, I have chosen this topic because I also represent this new youth generation of Muslims. And we really understand the importance of education nowadays. The golden era of the Prophet وسلم, and after his era, our religion was full of success in the science and knowledge. At that time, the religion was really strong. But from the time we start neglect knowledge, science and education, we are the nation, we are the ummah, started to decline. So, I will be very happy if all the parents, all the adults in our town, or in, our, in our state, they will try to do their best to educate their children according to Islam, according to the path of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu <laughs> Alhamdulillah, 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 Kamilin, and was salat was salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Tawim and in Nabi, but Takrim and if a Hamad is Shani Sharaf is Safi, Rahali Azza wa Jalam in Ka in the Mukhtara wa Adra, in Allah, who Malay get a who is Saloon or in Nabi, ya, you had led in Aman Salu Ali who was Salim with Taslima. saying about the path of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we should pay a lot of attention on the, teach, on the teaching of the Prophet. Of course, he was a good example of being a good Muslim, but also he was a good example of being a good father, he was a good example of being a good neighbor, 
So that's a good example of being soldier, of leader, and whatever qualities you can find in a man. <coughs> in one of the his hadith, he will mention, I was sent to you to complete the, the perfect manner. Perfect manner is very important in our religion. When we walk on the street as a Muslim, if non-Muslim will be passing on the same way, you should feel that safe while walking by the Muslim. The Muslim, I mean, we should be a good example in the society we are in. It doesn't matter are we educators or business people. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told a lot, a lot about those traders who treat in an honor Martin manner in their business place. They never lie, they never cheat. So by doing the halal earning, we can be a good example for others. We see the problem of our ummah, that in order to earn for our bread, sometimes we Muslims choose any possible ways. And by doing that, we not only make bad our reputation, but reputation of our religion in general. So Islam is not only in masjid, Islam in your business place. Islam is in our classrooms. Islam in our any places we are in. It doesn't matter our position or profession. We are those people who are can who can be reason for other others to accept religion or escape from that, to be far from that. And as it is mentioned in the hadith, Prophet was a good example of the good manner, makarim al akhlaq. So we are the those followers of him should try to be a good example of that too. All the hadith and ayahs I mentioned about the importance of to follow the Ahl Sunnah is all about that. إن الله يأمر بالعدل وإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الظالين إن للمتقين مفازا حدائق ورنابا وكواعب أترابا وكأسا دهاقا لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا كذابا جزاء من ربك عطاء حسابا رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما الرحمن لا يملكون من خطابا يوم يقوم الروح والملائكة الصفا 
لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن له الرحمن وقال صوابا ذلك اليوم الحق فمن شاء اتخذ إلى ربه مآبا إنا أنذرناكم عذابا قريبا يوم ينظر المرء ما قدمت يداه ويقول الكافر ويقول الكافر يا ليتني كنت ترابا الله أكبر سمير الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والتين والزيتون والطور السنين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله أكبر سميع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم uh, those of you who do not know uh, Imam Sarjan uh, he has recently moved to Delaware from um, China uh, he was born uh, and raised in Russia, uh, then he moved to Turkey for his uh, education, from there he went to China, and recently joined as Imam of uh, Glasgow Masjid, um, you know, by the People's Plaza. So we welcome him, uh, welcome to Delaware, welcome to uh, Newark, uh, we're very happy to have you here. Jazakallah.
uh, as you as you go out uh, in the hall in the main building of Union, uh, there is a science fair. Students have worked really hard, and it'll be uh, will will appreciate if you stop by just for a few minutes, uh, see what they have done, and and you know encourage them uh, for what they have been doing. Uh, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. Salam. Salam alaikum.